Food fun fish. The prion we eat doesn't all have to come across the meat counter. There's good eating right out of the streams and lakes. All you have to do is catch it. Try your luck for bluegill or walleyes, channel cat, or even carp or sheep's head. It may take some special lures or just a plain old cane pole and bobber. But this is one way of combining fun with food. In fact, just the thought of fresh fish in the pan might spur you on to a bigger and better catch. And how do you clean that catch? Bob Mormon, Extension Wildlife Conservationist, shows a quick and easy method of filleting a good-sized fish like carp. You start with a clean working surface and a flexible knife that's really sharp. Next, try to get a good hold on the fish. Hook your finger behind the gill, and then start out by cutting behind that gill and cutting on with a line from head to tail, right along the backbone. You cut just through the scales or the skin, all the way to the tail. Then with the knife flat along the side of the fish, start to gently cut and peel the flesh back off the bones. Holding the meat back out of the way so that you can easily see what you're doing is a good idea. Now when you reach the tail, don't cut through the skin. Just lay the fillet back on the block, flesh side up, and continue cutting from the tail end, run the knife along just under the flesh, cutting that flesh itself loose from the skin. And you see, then you can pull the skin right out from under it, ready to toss it away. Now, turn the fillet over and cut out that heavy, dark red strip that runs full length of the fish. This is especially strong flavored in fish of this kind, so taking it out will give you a much milder flavor, which is usually what most people prefer when they eat fish. Once the fish gets to this stage, wash it in clean, cold water. You know, the faster you work in filleting your fish, washing it, and getting it into the refrigerator or the frying pan, the better your fish is going to taste. Okay, now half the fish is filleted. Just turn it over and do the other half exactly the same way. Once you get the hang of it, it won't be long before you have a pan full to tote inside for cooking or for freezing for later use. Now, whether you use your own catch or buy some of the less expensive ocean fish at the food store, you can make a quick and easy oven meal with it. Phyllis Olson, Extension Nutritionist, shows how to make tangy cheese fish bait with a pound of fish, enough for a family of four. She puts them in a shallow baking pan, then mixes a topping of two tablespoons of lemon juice, a teaspoonful of salt, a dash of pepper, and two tablespoons of chopped onion. Sprinkle this mixture over the fish, and then top each fillet off with a bit of margarine. And then they're ready for the oven, which has been set at 350 degrees. After the fish has baked for 15 minutes, pull it out of the oven to sprinkle on a bit of cheese. A third of a cup of cheese is enough for all four fillets. Then back to the oven until the cheese melts and the fish is done, and that's when it flakes and breaks apart. And here's the total meal, all straight from the oven. Featuring, of course, tangy cheese fish bake. Looks inviting, doesn't it? And fish prepared this way really costs very little, especially if you catch it yourself. And that's a sport that many people enjoy. The cleaning, 
Well, that's a skill that's easy to learn, and it's worth it for dishes like tangy cheese fish bake. Would you like the recipe? It's yours for the asking. All you have to do to get it is to send a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa, and ask for the fish dish. That's good mix. Biscuits for breakfast? It's almost unheard of in this day and age when everyone is in such a hurry. But do they ever love them? Dad's specialty is biscuits smothered with creamed eggs. Mom's is with honey. And as far as the kids go, butter, honey, jelly, you name it. They just like biscuits any old way. But how does this mom do it, have biscuits for breakfast, when she has to head out the door herself for an 8 o'clock job? Well, she's found the answer all right. A mix, a homemade biscuit mix. Phyllis Olson, Extension Nutritionist, shows how easy it is to have a mix on hand with Bountiful Biscuit Mix, a homemade mix that you can make too. You need something big to mix it in and a big sieve or sifter to use as you blend and sift. Start with the flour. There's no need to sift, just give it a stir and then measure out seven cups. And when you're shopping for flour, watch for enriched flour. Enriched means that the nutrients taken out in the processing of the wheat have been put back in again. Next, non-fat dry milk. It takes a cupful, and this gives as much calcium, protein, and other nutrients as a quart of liquid skim milk does. And then baking powder, the double action type. It takes a fourth of a cup for this mix recipe. and four teaspoons of salt. It pays to use iodized salt whenever you can. That's the salt that helps protect us against goiter, and it costs just the same as regular salt. Now it's a matter of blending these ingredients together, and that's where the sifter or sieve comes in handy. Just stir the mixture through several times over, and when you no longer see patches of flour or dry milk, then it's blended enough. Now for the shortening, use a solid type shortening and cut it in. It takes one and a third cups. That's the third of a cup, and the full cup has already been measured, ready to go in later. Cut the shortening in with a handy cutter or knife, or perhaps you have a mixer that can handle this job. Of course, you could even use the old-fashioned way of blending it in with your fingers. If you've used shortening that doesn't have to be refrigerated, your mix won't have to be refrigerated either, and you can store it in containers such as these right on the cupboard shelf. Just be sure the container has a tight-fitting lid. Here's what the mixture should look like after the shortening has been well blended in, just like fine meal. Then it's ready to store in one of those containers, and it's a good idea to label it too so you won't get mixed up when you're ready to use it. To show how easy it is to use homemade Bonifold biscuit mix, she's putting in the last one of three cups of the mix. That's what it takes to make about a dozen biscuits and two-thirds of a cup of water. That's just enough so that the dough is easy to handle. Stir it in until the dough clings together and away from the sides of the bowl. Then smooth a bit of flour on a board or the countertop and turn out the dough. Then knead it with your fingers just a few turns. You can either press it or pat it into the shape you want. Leave it about a half inch thick if you're going to cut out biscuits. But we're going to make something even more special, some quickie cinnamon rolls. And for this, it's rolled into a square about a foot across and a fourth inch thick, spread with margarine and topped with sugar and cinnamon. How much you use, of course, depends on what your family likes. Now roll it up from the bottom up, just like you were rolling a jelly roll, into a long tube shape. And when you get to the top, pinch the edge of the dough against the roll to sort of seal it in place. Then cut it into three quarter inch pieces and lay them with the cut side down on a greased cookie sheet. 
and then they're ready to slip into the oven for baking. It takes a hot oven, 425 degrees, for just 15 minutes. The result? Piping hot, quickie cinnamon rolls, ready for a special family supper or good enough for company anytime, made from bountiful biscuit mix. And that's just one of the tempting ways you can use this mix. There are others on the back of this recipe for the mix itself. So if you'd like to try them, send a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the biscuit mix. Food fun, frozen orange juice. What tastes better on a hot summer day or any day than a fresh, juicy orange? It's just plain good, down to the last flavorful drip. Well, fresh oranges aren't always around, however, but one orange product that you can always count on is frozen orange juice. It's the easiest and the cheapest way to get your vitamin C for the day. Just a half cup does it. Of course, a whole orange will give you just as much, but on the average, it costs two and a half times more. Or compare orange juice to another citrus fruit, grapefruit. A half will fill your vitamin C need, but it costs about twice as much. Or orange juice compared to strawberries, a good source of vitamin C too. Enough to equal the same amount of vitamin C may cost five times as much. Or orange juice compared with cantaloupe. A half of a cantaloupe fills your vitamin C need, but the cost about six times as much. Now, let's compare frozen orange juice with vegetables that are rich in vitamin C, too. Broccoli, for example. A half cup gives even more of this vitamin, but the cost twice as much. Or another comparison, orange juice to Brussels sprouts. Again, a half cup of this vegetable gives ample vitamin C for the day, but costs three times as much as the half cup of juice. And orange juice can hold its own against a green pepper, too. This pod fills your daily needs, but the vitamin C costs about three and a half times as much. So no matter which natural source of vitamin C you look at, you'll usually find the reconstituted frozen orange juice costs the least. But there are other ways to use it besides as a breakfast drink. Phyllis Olson, who's extension nutritionist, shows quick ways with the concentrate right out of the can, once it's melted, of course. For instance, an Orange Joyous, a flavorful drink to whip and serve immediately. You start with a cup and a half of water, two-thirds of a cup of non-fat dry milk, a fourth cup of sugar, then right out of the frozen juice can, a fourth cup of the melted concentrate. And for extra flavor, a teaspoon of vanilla. Turn on the blender a few seconds, or you could make this in a mixer or by hand, and there's a most delicious and nutritious drink for any age. The nutritional value of a whole cup of milk plus a half cup of orange juice. It's what we call the Orange Joyous. Try it. And here are some other quickie ideas. Use the concentrate to top a dish of fresh fruit. It's acid enough to keep such light-colored fruits as bananas and fresh peaches from turning brown. Just a tablespoon gives about three-fourths of your daily vitamin C. Or use some of the orange concentrate in place of some of the water when you're making a gelatin salad. It goes well with most fruit combinations, but it also puts some zip into a vegetable gelatin. Try it with a mixture of cabbage, carrots, celery, and tart, crisp apples. It'll be a real treat when you pull this salad out of the refrigerator, rich in flavor and rich in vitamin C. 
or make an icing with the concentrate, non-fat dry milk and more. Kids really go for it on graham crackers or this very same mixture can be used as a topping on breakfast pancakes. It will add more flavor plus more nutrients than the usual butter and syrup toppings. And you can serve it for club on a warm gingerbread. Besides being tasty, this is a topping that gives you more than just calories. It's non-fat dry milk, margarine, powdered sugar, and the frozen orange juice concentrate. Good for you, as well as good. Would you like the recipes for all these ways of using frozen orange juice? Well, here they are, starting with the Orange Joyous. That super good drink we whipped up first. And on the back, are the other quickies using the concentrate right out of the can. So send a card today to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the orange juice recipes. Food Fun, tomato. how such a tiny seed can produce such a lot of flavorful eating. Juicy red ripe tomatoes. I love apple it was once called and love it we should. It's something we can raise in our own gardens and we can probably use in more ways than any other produce. Raw in salads or shimmering in gelatin. Drink it for breakfast, spread it on our bread, sip it in soup or sop it on our hamburger. And we can can it, freeze it, and use it when we please it. Yes, love that love apple. It can be used in so many different ways. And here's one way that really shows off that red ripe tomato at its very best. It's tomato slices topped with a broccoli mix and called Top a Tomato Bake. Start with some choice medium sized tomatoes and a good sharp slicing knife. Then Follow the directions of Phyllis Olson, the extension nutritionist, as she shows us how to do it. Cut the tomatoes in nice big slices, she says, a half to three quarters of an inch thick. About three or four slices per tomato, depending on its size. And leave the skin on, of course. Then put them in a shallow baking dish. Slices from about three or four tomatoes will do for six to eight people. That's figuring two slices per person. And now to make the topping. Melt a tablespoon of shortening and cook a fourth of a cup of chopped onions in it. Just until tender. And add 10 ounce package of frozen chopped broccoli, partially cooked and then drained. And from a cup of shredded processed cheese, add all but about two tablespoonfuls, which we'll hold back and use later. Then mix this together, but do not heat it further and it's ready to top the tomato slices. So salt and pepper the slices first to bring out the flavor. And then add the topping. About a heaping tablespoonful on each. It not only adds a rich flavor to the tomato, but it adds a lot of nutritional value as well. Two of these top of tomatoes will furnish half of the vitamin A you need for a day, about a third of the calcium, Plus, meet your needs of vitamin C. And really, that's quite a nutritional mouthful. Last to go on is that little bit of shredded cheese that we held back earlier, remember? The two tablespoonfuls left in the bottom of the measuring cup. It gives a golden glow to the top of each already colorful tomato. And there they are, ready for the oven. But you needn't slip them in until the guests arrive, as it takes such a short time to cook. About eight minutes in a hot oven. Want to see what they look like right out of the oven? Well, here they are, still pretty as a picture and bubbly hot, too. It doesn't take much to cook these top of tomatoes, and once they're done, they need to go right to the table. And yes, your company's eyes will light up with the colorful sight and just wait until they cut their first colorful bite.
That's right. It's a pleasant surprise, too. And to think they're so easy to do. So if it's compliments you are looking for, along with good nutrition, here's a recipe that's hard to beat. If you'd like a copy, it's yours for the asking. Top a tomato bake. And this isn't the only good recipe. There's another on the back called Fresh from the Garden Medley, a good one to use when everything comes ripe all at once. It starts out with bacon that we're gonna crumble and use later for topping. And in the fat of that bacon, you cook tomatoes, of course. They're a big part of this dish, too, along with zucchini, corn, and a bit of onion. Gently stir the vegetables together to blend both the flavors and the colors, seasoning with salt and pepper as you stir. An easy dish to make in a skillet right on top of the stove, and in just a matter of minutes, it's done and ready to dish up for a family meal. Then for extra flavor, top it off with that crumble bacon that we started with. Well, here's something the family will really dig into. Truly a medley of colorful eating. This and the top of tomato bake are both on the same leaflet, and to get it, you just drop a card to Food Fun, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. Ask for the tomato recipes. <laughs>